Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Toxie Moxie and today I'm going to be sharing some tips to help you get the most of your farm layout in Coral Island. These tips will be fairly easy, so if you're a beginner or someone who's been playing for a while, you'll still be able to benefit from them, making your farm even better. I've been playing for hundreds of hours and putting in a bunch of work into my farm, so these should help you. One of the benefits of having a good farm layout is that you'll be able to optimise your resources, which will help you make lots of money in the game, allowing you to buy all the goodies you want. So let's get straight into them. Before we start messing around with the main farm area, there is one important thing you need to do before you get started, and that is to clear your farm of all debris. While it might seem unnecessary, it will save you a lot of time in the future as it will enable you to see your whole layout clearly, place things where you want and to be able to get upgrades for your tools. At a certain point, you'll need hard grade to upgrade your tools and buildings and there is hardwood on your farm. However, you can't chop it until you have a stronger tool. This is where explosions come in. You'll be able to craft these once you reach level one in mining or you'll be able to get some as a reward for donating 60 items to the museum. Once you have some, place them next to your hardwood on your farm, run away, and this will destroy them and give you hardwood. I've already cleared this so I can't show you again, however you can repeat this for all pieces of hardwood on your farm. If you're new to farming games, don't worry about chopping trees down as you can always take the seeds they drop to grow more and place them exactly where you'd like them to be. Chests are a huge part of the game as they allow you to store all your items, but we have to be careful about their placement. Once you place a chest down and you fill it up, you won't be able to break it to move it somewhere else unless you empty it all out. One of the best places I've found to place chests are next to my house. The areas surrounding the house are not in the main section of the farm, this means you'll have easy access to them. I like to place them close together which is good as it saves you time when looking for what you need. Not all of them need to be next to your house. Another area I've found to be great is the area to the middle right of the farm. If you didn't know you can rename your chest so it's easier to remember what's stored inside. All you have to do is open the chest and at the top you'll see an option to rename it. Any good farm needs to have a variety of animals and the farm buildings allow you to have animals which give you different animal products that you can use in cooking, crafting and also you can turn them into artisan products which sell for extremely high prices, making farm buildings essential. The first farm buildings that are great to get started with are the coop, barn and silo. One of the easiest buildings to get is the coop which houses chickens, ducks, quails and peafowls. To start, this will allow you to hold four animals and only takes two days to build from the carpenter. The coop will cost you 100 wood, 50 stone, 5 bronze bars, 10 fibre and 2,000 coins. The barn houses cows, sheep, goats, pigs, llamas and luwax, while the silo is for storing hay for your animals. Once you have a farm building, you can place your silo anywhere on your farm. It doesn't have to be right next to that building. The silo is used for getting hay from inside your farm buildings to feed your animals. For my farm, I've placed my coop and barn next to each other so I can section the area off with a gate so I can let my animals out to eat fresh grass. I found it easier having them next to each other as it made collecting animal products much quicker by just going to the next building. After you have your materials, you'll want to craft, and the way to do this is through crafting and artisan stations. Some will be available right away and some you have to unlock as you progress the game and increase your skill levels. Crafting these stations will allow you to craft different items which can be used for upgrades. Crafting on artisan stations give you artisan products which can be sold for high prices. Here are some of the items that will get you lots and lots of coins that I usually keep in my aging barrel on rotation. Melon wine, fermented goat cheese wheels, lily mead, truffle oil and also aged sake too. Some of the really useful stations you'll unlock early on in the game are the kiln, furnace and compost bin. 
The kiln allows you to process wood into charcoal and you can also process scrap and stone into glass. The furnace smelts your ores into bars which you'll need for upgrades and shop items. You'll need one charcoal to power the furnace and then five of your chosen ore to make one bar which means the kiln and the furnace go hand in hand as you use the charcoal from the kiln to power your furnace. The compost bin is for turning trash into compost. Compost is mostly used for fertilizer. Fertilizer improves your crop quality when farming and will give you a higher chance for higher quality crops. The higher the quality of the crop, the more they'll sell for. This also applies when using them in an artisan station. If you put a silver quality item into an artisan station, the result will also be silver. I found that placing my stations around the edge of the farm meant that not only would I have space in the middle for decorating, but I found it so much easier when going from station to station to collect the items after they've been processed. The area where you want to plant your crops is really important as you'll want to plant a variety of crops. To protect your crops, you'll need scarecrows. To begin with, you'll be able to craft a makeshift scarecrow, but later on you'll have access to the ordinary scarecrow, which has a radius of 11 by 11 tiles, meaning you'll have much more space to plant. As well as the scarecrows, you'll need sprinklers. Sprinklers are so useful as they'll keep your crops auto watered. Also, if you have a lot of crops, this is vital as who wants to keep manually watering? Just like the scarecrow, you'll have different levels of sprinklers. Sprinkler one, which is a three by three radius. Sprinkler two, which is a five by five radius. And sprinkler three, which is a nine by nine area radius. Later on in the game, you'll also be able to add attachments to your sprinklers, such as auto fertilizer and auto harvest. For my crop area, I like to plant lots of different crops all at one time. So I use a mix of ordinary scarecrows and sprinkler threes. So I don't need to worry about watering and harvesting is easy. I've crafted a wooden fence around the area so it's nice and contained. I mentioned earlier not to worry about chopping down on your trees as you can plant new ones. But aside from the trees that grow around the island, you can also purchase fruit trees from Sam's General Store. There are two types of trees, seedlings and saplings. Seedlings require an area of 2x2 two two tiles, whereas saplings require the surrounding 8 tiles to be empty. You can have trees such as papaya, apples, oranges or even dragon fruit. I keep my seedlings next to my main crop area and my saplings right at the bottom of the farm in a line as you need a lot of space for them. Once you have your main layer of your farm how you'd like it, it's time to decorate. If you head to the furniture store in town, you'll have access to so many items and there are lots of different themes to choose from to mix and match to make your perfect farm. It can get a little pricey, but don't worry as there's no rush and you actually have some great outdoor things you can unlock and craft as you play through the game. I really like wood items and also the stone path. A little tip is that when you want to place or rotate your furniture, if you face that direction, the item should also face the same direction. It may seem a little daunting thinking how you can decorate your whole farm, but I found if you focus on small areas and work around them, it will be much easier. Don't forget, by pressing P, you'll be able to see your entire farm and this will give you an idea of how you want to place your items. I hope these tips help you optimize your farm layout a little bit more. Just remember you don't need to rush, play at your own pace and enjoy farming life on Coral Island. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. If there's anything you'd like to see next, please let me know in the comments below. Take care. Bye.